know that you're a phoenix, so rise up from all those ashes today. Yeah, you were scarred, but you were czar. You can call to the grave. I know you know that a lion is inside, sleeping in your heart. Step back and remember. What up, Pride? It's your boy Mari, back again with another reaction video. Today, we're getting into another part of Hamilton. Pretty sure this is part 11. I I am excited because, like, literally, y'all have been hyping this to no end. Like, every once in a while, coming up on a song, it will send reverberations through the comments and also my DMs and also people on Discord telling me how excited they are for me to react to a particular song that is coming up. And this is one of those moments. A bunch of people have told me that this is their favorite song in Act 2. This is their favorite song in the entire musical. This is the moment where everything changes, whatever that means. Um, so I'm hyped. I'm hyped. I better be levitating at the end of this song because if I'm not, I'm gonna be on all y'all heads. I'm just kidding. Most of the time when you guys say that a super dope song is coming up, I end up really, really loving that song. So I'm super, super excited. It doesn't always happen. Sometimes I'm like, yeah, that song is good, but the song right before it or right after it was better. Whatever. The point is, I'm excited for this because you guys have made me excited for this. So hopefully this is as great as you think it will be. And if it's not, don't blame me. Actually, I don't know who else you would blame, but whatever. The point is, we're getting into another song from Hamilton today. This has been a super long intro, but like I'm buzzing. Also, it's storming outside. So like it's a, it's, it's a weird vibe for me on this side of the screen. So hopefully this video ends up being entertaining and interesting for you guys. If it is, definitely make sure to subscribe. A lot of you guys are watching all of the videos, but are not subscribed. So please do subscribe. We have a lot more parts of Hamilton to go. And I'm going to be reacting to other musicals and other auxiliary Hamilton content, like the mixtape and all that stuff after I get done with this. So subscribe. You don't want to miss out on that stuff. But this intro has been long enough already. So without further ado, let's get into this. I'll see all you guys on the other side. Nobody needs to know. Boo. Boo this man. Tomato, 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 tomato. Ah, Mr. Secretary. Mr. Byrne, sir. Hey, did you hear the news about good old General Mercer? No. You know Claremont Street? Yeah. They renamed it after him. The Mercer legacy is secure. Sure. And all he had to do was die. Cause that's a lot less work. We ought to give it a try. <laughs> now how you gonna get the debt plan through? I guess I'm gonna finally have to listen to you. Really? Talk less. <laughs> Smile. Do whatever it takes to get my plan on the Congress floor. Hamilton. I'm sorry, Burr, I gotta go. Oh, but um, decisions are happening over dinner. Oh, okay. So this is, in fact, going to be a long video. I can already tell. So much to say, so little time. Where do I start? Everywhere, because it's Amari. First things first, we're on part 11. You should know by now, my knowledge of history, American history, is spotty at best. Uh, so I have no idea who General Mercer is. The name sounds familiar. I probably learned it in school and then proceeded to forget it after the test. I actually got good grades across the board, but I also got good grades in history. My point is I just didn't remember the stuff like I regurgitated it for the test and moved on with my life and so I have no idea who General Mercer is but I find it interesting that Burr is the one who brings this topic of conversation up it's reminiscent of my shot in that in my shot the idea of death and legacy being a wager or exchange that is not a bad thing like a lot of sane people are not willing to trade their life for their legacy but there are some select few who are and alex is denoted as being one of these people over and over and over again i mean at this point he's willing to exchange everything for legacy and in a way it worked because you know it's hundreds of years later and we're still talking about his dirty laundry so it worked but burr is also ambitious which we know and we learn and wait for it especially but he up until this point has been a lot more methodical and measured, tempered in his ambition than Alex has been. And that has benefited him in some ways and hurt him in other ways. But the idea of exchanging his life for his legacy, like this, this whole conversation, the fact that he is the one who brought it up. And when he's like, all he had to do is die. We should try it, which hilarious, by the way, love the, the comedy that's embedded in this. But that's like a new position from Burr that at least for me up until this point, I hadn't seen Burr as someone willing to die for it, so to speak, uh, or really 
risk it for the biscuit. That's been the biggest contrast as far as the ambition goes, like their approach to their ambition between him and Alex. And so him being more in that mindset is is very interesting and a new development, at least from my understanding of the character. Now we haven't seen him in like years, basically, because he's other than narrating, he hasn't been around since a long time <laughs> it's, it's been a while since my boy has been like in the songs as a character so things could have changed for him mentally emotionally interpersonally his approach whatever but that's something of note that is then contrasted almost immediately with him asking hamilton how are you going to get your your plan through congress and hamilton's being like i'm going to finally listen to you i'm going to finally heed the advice that you have given me which is talk less, smile more, and basically don't be a raging maniac or a honey badger. You know we had to bring it back to accomplish your goals. Like when you're working, this is not war, this is politics. And politics, mostly, uh, you need a certain level of political correctness, I guess, and interpersonal skills to maneuver and to get your plans through. And I said all of that to say that I find it interesting that they're now becoming more like each other. Like Burr is now talking about legacy from the standpoint of it is worth dying for even jokingly in all jokes there is some form of truth and then alex is now like hey i'm i'm going to have to be more like you i'm gonna have to be more politically correct i'm gonna have to heed your advice to accomplish what i want to accomplish and it's also interesting that he he disregarded his advice for years until he got into a place that's more like Burr's place. It's not the exact same because Burr at the time was an orphan. He didn't have a family, but he did have a legacy from a family that he was trying to live up to and that he was afraid to risk as again, we learn in Wait For It, which is why he's so measured in his ambition. Whereas Alex had nothing to lose. He was already at the bottom. So like it, all you could do is go up or stay at the same level so he could be more brash. But now he has a great position. He has somewhat of a legacy that he is building for himself as far as being a part of like this genesis of the government of this new country. And also he has like a family and attached to that, he has a family name because he married into a rich family. So he's, he's not only creating a family via his children, which is in and of itself a form of legacy, but he is also he's also now attached to the Skyler name, which in and of itself is a form of, of legacy that I'm sure he feels the pressure to live up to. And so uh, I find it interesting that now that he is in a place where he has something to lose, he is now more willing to be measured in his approach like Burr was back when Burr already had something to lose, even though he was an orphan and, and still had ambition so um a lot of interesting things are happening oh i didn't say it but i i feel like this should go without saying talk less smile more is a reference to a previous song i mean they literally say that it's a reference to a previous song so i didn't feel like i needed to say it but before the comments were filled with people thinking that i missed that i know that that's a reference to aaron burser okay it literally when he said it i was like oh i should take that advice but clearly I haven't. So uh, I do smile a lot though. So that, I got half of it. But yeah, I didn't hear a musical motif reference, but it, it is quite blatantly a reference to previous lyrics and a previous song. I'm sorry, Burr, I gotta go. Oh, but um, decisions are happening over dinner. Ouch. Two Virginians and an immigrant walk into a room diametrically opposed foes. They emerge with a compromise, having open doors that were previously closed. The immigrant emerges with unprecedented finding. I wasn't gonna say it, but I got, I got to. Okay, I gotta say something. I, 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 I like it. The diametrically opposed foes. Something, something, something closed, bros. Like you know, the little, the little, the little double rhyme at the end is hitting. It's hitting. I like it. The writing in this is incredible and i want to be clear the lyrics be banging okay they be, they still hitting okay uh even in the like non-rappy songs i wouldn't consider this a rappy song kind of back to what i was saying in like a couple of the earlier songs where it's kind of like dialogue over music but it doesn't matter the point is the lyrics are still fire the immigrant emerges with unprecedented financial power a system he can shape however he wants the virginians emerge with the nation's capital and here's the piece de resistance. No one else was in the room where it happened. The room where it happened. The room where it happened. No one else was in the room where it happened. The room where it happened. The room where it happened. No 
one really knows how the game is played The art of the trade, how the sausage gets made We just assume that it happens But no one else is in the room where it happens I don't know what's up with the, the little da 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 like the little horn section thing that in my rant towards the end of the last video, I was like, oh, this is probably going to be like a super happy song. I don't know that this is a, a happy song. I guess it is. Like Hamilton's finally getting what he wants. I did not know that there was like a little trade-off, I guess, where Hamilton got what he wanted and that's how the capital got in the southern region but that's not why i paused <laughs> why i paused was the lights the lighting is fire dude okay again i can't talk about everything in every single video but do know that i be picking up on stuff that i don't be mentioning but sometimes it's so fire i gotta say something like when they said uh i think he said no one else was in the room where it happens and and the the background dancers cast ensemble whatever you guys want to call them the people in white they walk into the light and the light gradually goes from like a like a spotlight into like this like um i think it's a diamond shape or a square shape or something like that like that's that was cool okay they're in a little box like a room do you, you get what i'm saying and they are in there solo by themselves no one else is in their room you see what i'm saying okay that's fire anyway i don't know what it's supposed to mean or like if it if it's supposed to mean anything i just thought it was cool so i i decided to yell at you for it so um yeah but no one else is in the room where it happens Alexander was on Washington's doorstep one day in distress and disarray. Alexander said, I've nowhere else to turn. And basically begged me to join the fray. I approached Madison and said, I know you hate him, but let's hear what he has to say. Well, I arranged the meeting. I arranged the menu, the venue, the seating. But okay, I get why this song is the only song in this video. This video is going to be 18 years long, but like... Come on now, I, I arrange the, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, I got it, I got it. I arrange the, the seating, the venue, the menu, the, the meeting, come on now, come on, come on now, you see what I'm saying? Like the little internal rhyme inside of there, we already know that Jefferson can internal rhyme from the cabinet battle where he like showed off like all of this like dope lyricism or whatever, but my point is this song is not one of the super like hip hoppy rap focused songs but it is still lyrically it's it's hitting it's hitting and i gotta i gotta say something about it because like i just i like it okay i i like it it's sections of dialogue essentially bookended by some singing with burr and the company but the sections of dialogue are not just like info dumps they're also lyrically competent is basically what i'm saying and i think that that's cool because it didn't have to be that way like they could have made the rap songs the lyrically impressive songs the singing songs the vocally impressive songs and then like some extra shit in there that just tells you hey this is what happened in history you know but the care that was put into these little non i don't want to call it not musical because the song is musical and it's quite interesting i'll get to that probably on a later pause but you get what i'm saying this is not like i don't know cabinet battle this is not my shot this is not like guns and ships or something like that where it's like super rap heavy but it is still lyrically competent you feel me but what else was in the moon baby happy baby happy baby happy was in the room, baby, happy, the room, baby, happy, the room, baby, happy. No one really knows how the parties get to yes. The pieces that are sacrificed in every game of chess. We just assume that it happens. But no one else is in the room where it happens. Congress is fighting over where to put the capital. It isn't pretty. Maybe we can solve one problem with another and win a victory for the Southerners. In other words, oh, a quid pro quo. I suppose. Wouldn't you like to work a little closer to home? Actually, I would. Well, I propose the Potomac. And you'll provide him his vote. Well, we'll see how it goes. Let's go. Now. What else is in the room where it happened? The room where it happened? The room where it happened? This is not like the song I'm about to compare it to, but it is if you hear me all the way out uh so 
that moment reminded me of satisfied what what did he say <laughs> just hear me out bro what i say the way that this song starts with the conversation between alex and burr and then takes you off into narration from burr and then whips you back around to getting the other side of of that interaction as they're having their conversation about legacy and dying and, and what not how he's going to get his stuff through congress we then later in the song technically in satisfied it, it's it's a different song where you get the other perspective but you get my point we we then later get the other side of that and get the conversation that is being had between madison and jefferson and i think that's cool they don't have to tell it in this non-linear way in which they're telling some of these interactions but in doing it this way we get to experience a moment from one character or one set of characters perspective gnaw on that or like digest the moment for what it is and then we get an additional scene or perspective that recontextualizes everything and so i think that it's really cool and even before we get the recontextualization of what their ideas were we know what comes of it we get the end result of it we don't just get alex being pulled away we get burr turning around and being like hey two virginians and an orphan or whatever uh or no he said two virginians and an immigrant enter a bar and then the joke proceeds and this is what came of it. Point is that I really like this non-linear telling. I don't think that there's necessarily a connection between this scene and it's uh, Winter's Ball, Helpless, and Satisfied is like the three where we get like the disjointed non-linear telling of the situation. And then like here, we're getting the same thing. I don't think those two things, at least so far, are really connected. This has nothing at all to do with Alex's family. Thank God I, I couldn't take another video like the one I just had back to back but it is still that same like writing approach of the non-linear storytelling and i just i thought it's really cool it's weird that burr keeps being like no one else was in the room when it happened we don't really know what happened but they're literally telling us what happened now earlier they, they kept saying tom is claimed right so i guess they're saying like we get his perspective but we don't really know if he's lying or not because him and alex weren't necessarily on friendly terms prior to this and like his characterization of alex being in distress and like super pathetic before the meeting is not at all the way that alex was acting before the meeting like he was like hey I gotta go get some business done. I think he said something something's happening decisions are happening over dinner or something like that which i thought was an ouch because it's like you know kind of rubbing Burr's face in the fact that like, hey, I'm about to go do some important stuff. Can't sit here and talk to you about what you want to talk about, you know? It does call everything else Jefferson said about the meeting into question because what we do know of what happened before the meeting is not at all like what Thomas said was what happened. So now he is a a non-trustworthy narrator. I don't know. I'm just, I'm just talking. I, I, don't, I don't know where that train of thought was going. I'm just processing all of this that's happening here. So hopefully there was something in there that you that you got from that. Congress is fighting over where to put the capital. Yeah. It isn't pretty. The Jefferson. What do they say there? It sounded like someone said yeah yeah yeah, yeah and someone sounded like someone else said Detroit. Are they, what? What? Just what? <laughs> like no like genu i'm genuinely asking what is are they just screaming random stuff in my brain because of like they're fighting over locations my brain just like here's detroit like what is what is that about no Or did you know even then it doesn't matter where you put the U.S. capital? Because we all have the banks. We're in the same spot. You got more than you gave. And I wanted what I got. When you got skin in the game, you stay in the game. But you don't get a win unless you play in the game. Oh, you get love for it. You get hate for it. You get nothing if you win for it, win for it. Win. I... I have...
I have so many, like, I, I kept being like, don't pause yet. And every time I didn't pause, they'd say another sentence that, that would make me have either another question or another thought. So bear with me. <laughs> uh, so many thoughts. Okay. First off, Alex is not really talking to Burr. Like, I don't know if this is happening in Burr's head or if this is like a, Cause he's the, okay. The reason I know that that doesn't make sense, but the reason I said that is because that whole time Alex is lifeless and talking off into the distance instead of like actually talking to Burr. Meanwhile, the rest of the party is like frozen, and Alex doesn't become animated until he says the "wait for it, wait for it, wait for it," which is obviously a callback to "wait for it," which was Burr's like previous song where we got Burr's thought process, right? So like the the interaction here is just weird. It's like it it's it it almost seems like Burr imagining what he thinks that does that make sense? Like what it's like he doesn't know what happened in the room and he's curious and so he's like imagining Hamilton's thought process in why he sold New York down the river, however they worded it. The point is the capital is no longer in New York or Philadelphia, which both are in the North, but instead it will now be in the South, uh, in a piece of, you know, Maryland and, and Virginia, whatever. But one thing that he said where he was like, was there presidential pressure to something? I don't know. Pres presidential pressure to deliver. That's really interesting because George Washington is also from Virginia, which is something that he noted at the end of uh, the cabinet battle where he was like, basically, Alex was frustrated that he couldn't get the Virginians to sign on to his, his economic plan. And George Washington was like, basically watch your mouth. I'm also a, a Virginian. So like George Washington could have been behind some of this like conceding to the South and the Virginian Vir Virginians. So it, that could have been that, that like connection makes sense there. There was also something uh, th so much happened in like, like five seconds of song dialogue that it was, that it was, it was a lot for me. I don't understand why, whether this is in Burr's head or not, that's, that's my own like pet theory. If it's not whatever, just disregard that. But it was weird. That interaction was weird. You have to admit that is in no way how Hamilton normally acts. Like that super reserved, calm, like almost like like psychopathic, just no level of emotional expression uh, until, uh, again, he went to like make fun of Burr's wait for it, wait for it, wait for it thing. But in that interaction, I don't really get how Alex got over on the Southerners. Like he, he said that... Um, I think Burr said, uh, you got more than you gave. And then Hamilton started talking about like having skin in the game or something. Right. Uh, but why I get that Alex got what he wanted, which was the financial situation with the, the federal government that he was like pushing for in the cabinet battle. I get that. But how did he get more than he get? Like the, the capital is pretty important. And pushing the capital to the south, I get why the Southerners would want the capital in the south because it's like, okay, if we're giving you guys all of the control of the money in the north, we need something down here, especially because we are in a better economic situation than you guys are because we didn't have to fight most of the war down here. And also slavery, unpaid labor is profitable. And so I, I get from the Southerners perspective why they would want the capital, why they would agree to you guys have oh <laughs> you guys have i was about to say you guys have the capital like you know money and then the, we'll take the capital dc you know but i don't get how that's alex getting over on the southerners am i dumb i'm not a smart man but i know what love is is this obvious is let me know because i i genuinely feel like they both got something big alex speaking on behalf of the northerners got the money and Thomas and Madison, speaking on behalf of the Southerners, got the capital. So how did he like, you know? Anyway, so so much is happening in this song. I guess the, I guess this is the song where everything changes. Like literally, the capital shifts. Alex gets his his Congress plan through. So here we go. 
You get nothing if you win for it, win for it, win. God help and forgive me. I want to build something that's going to outlive me. What do you want, bro? What do you want, bro? If you stand for nothing, bro? what do you fall for? I... That was a big moment. Okay, and I just wanted to say before we go into whatever this is, obviously that's a motif or a reference. Again, I'm not catching any musical motifs in this song up until this point, but I am catching obviously a lot of like thematic and lyrical references. And that one was another one. Back to, um, that's Aaron Burser as well, right? The, uh, if you stand for nothing, bird, what will you fall for in the, in the little tavern scene? I don't know that those songs like bleed into each other. And so like, I don't, I don't really n know where one, starts and one stops to be honest but anyway that's obviously a reference back to that and i just wanted to say that before we went into like whatever this was because that was kind of like a really intense moment where alex was like asking burr what do you want i i wanna be in the room where it happens the room where it happens i wanna be in the room where it happens the room where it happens i wanna be in the room whoa oh whoa why are you emotion why why does why does the emotion always sneak up on me in in this shut up i'm not gonna cry i hear you guys laughing from here i'm not gonna cry but same similar thing. I why am I relating to Burr now? What what is this is not even the same musical anymore. I don't like this at all. Everybody who I used to believe in, except Eliza, my queen, sweet baby Eliza, is is forever dope. I can't say that because I haven't finished this. She might turn out to be psycho too. But the tables are turning. They they literally just picked up a table. So maybe that's what they're trying to imply. But say what you're trying to say. You're dancing around the point. Um, that was. That was incredible. That was a dope moment. That that was really, wow. Just for the record, I'm gonna go back and like listen to all of this like straight through. But I I had to I had to stop because that crescendo of if you don't know what a crescendo is, it's basically like an increase in uh, intensity and loudness of a musical phrase, and so it, it starts soft and then it builds in intensity. That that is that was great. Like the the symbolic nature of Burr being pressed, like, what do you want? If if you stand for nothing, what will you fall for? And all of the, the, the ensemble, you know, what do you want, Burr? What do you want, Burr? What do you want, Burr? And he comes to this quiet, timid, slower, like the tempo changes in in that section. I want to be in the room where it happens. And and the more he says it, the more he he becomes impassioned, the more he grows in conviction with that stand that is what i i want to be in the room where it happens like you guys were in this room i haven't i'm having to imagine scenarios of what could have possibly happened i'm having to take thomas jefferson's word on it when i know that he is probably lying about at least part of that if not all of it i want to be a mover and shaker i want to be in the room where the important stuff is happening and i i cannot agree more i with every fiber of my being, I feel you on that. And that was like powerful as hell. Um, so yeah, I know you guys love Leslie, like the actor. And so I'm sure you guys also agree that it was powerful. But for the, those of you who were like, hey, when you were talking about Enneagram, you are talking about three core and your ambition and like the ways in which that you understand Alex's like drive and and desire for legacy and, and greatness all of you guys who were like rocking with me on that let me know if this part also hit you like if you if you felt burr on this some of y'all might already be in the room i am still very much i'm not even in the f building oh. oh my god i thought this was a classy party sorry that was <laughs> a slight frustration uh point is that i am definitely not in the room where it is happening and I want to be. And so I get like Burr's feelings. Like he's, he's, he's growing, I can't say frustrated, but he, he is growing more impassioned with his ambition. And we already started the song off with him kind of mentally coming to a place that's closer to 
Alex as far as like the importance of legacy and what you're willing to trade for it. And so uh, the rest of this song developing into him coming to grips with the fact that like him not being a part of this monumental decision, him not being in the room and having his quote unquote like frenemy rub that in his face like, oh, sorry, got to go to the dinner where, you know, the important stuff is happening. That's I, I get it. And I don't know what position burr has at this point but the fact that i don't know what position burr has at this point probably means that his position is not super super important like jefferson like madison like alex like george like all of all of these people who started around the same level as him or in the case of alex who started under him are like pushing past him and so um he is now coming to grips with like hey i am ambitious too like i want to i i I get why they referenced Wait For It in this song, because this is like, it's a similar goal as Wait For It, but it's a different, it's a different feeling. It's more proactive in nature in that while he isn't like necessarily doing anything, but like kind of spinning and, and, and wondering what happened, he is more, I don't know, impassioned and emboldened to like actually put some giddy up behind his ambition. Does that, does that make sense? So yeah, that moment gave me goosebumps or frisson. It's French, which is why I said it with that weird accent, but it's the scientific word for like the, the chills or goosebumps that you get like when you're listening to something and it's like, like really moves you or whatever. I got that when I was watching that because I was like, wow. Like the singing, the, the, the slow tip, everything about it was great. It was, it was great. It was incredible. I'm about to watch it again because I can. And let me know if that like hit you guys like, like it hit me was that like a whoa like i know you guys love the song but like that specific moment was that symbolically musically literally powerful for you what they trade away Okay, that already sounded like a motif. As soon as I heard that, that sounded like a motif. I'm not, that's that's not this video. Um, ouch, I got a lot more to say. So uh, stick around, because, whoa. Uh, wow, 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 <laughs> wow. Oh, okay, um, wow. I'm kind of stunned, I'm not gonna lie. Like when you guys were hyping that song coming into it, I expected it to be very different than that but that that was incredible but not at all like in the way that i was anticipating i find that song so interesting like the fact that it has this like really jazzy flair to it i initially thought was because of uh jefferson right like jefferson's thing is like jazzy when he in what did i miss his whole like number is has this like jazzy feel to it and it's like meant to show that he's behind the times like I, I got it we already had that conversation right but the jazzy bluesiness of it picks up around the time that jefferson and madison come into the song so i thought that that was the reason but it's not because even after the focus shifts away from them it it continues down that path but i i really enjoyed it i thought it was so great and all the dancing like very interesting stuff uh burr kind of being like beside himself throughout the whole song like this is the most emotional we have seen him I feel like this song in this song we see our two main characters our protagonist and his foil antagonist i don't know however you want to consider burr it doesn't really matter the point is these two are starting to converge 
as far as their approach goes alex is a lot less brash and balls to the wall he's a lot more measured in his approach he comes to grips with the fact that like hey not everybody's gonna like me i'm not gonna like everybody i think at one point he said like hate the sin love the sinner or, or something like that and so like he's basically being more burr-esque and in this song burr is being more hamilton-y because he's, he's so much more emotionally expressive he's he's more forward about what it is that he wants and also like you know his ambitions on full display whatnot focusing on legacy and like you know all that stuff hamilton is is inherently driven as a character by what it is that he wants uh and that's not to say that alex is impulsive but it is to say that at every single moment he is thinking what is it that i want and is making decisions based on that versus burr has had to be a lot more methodical and in this song if i galaxy brain it i feel like like at least 70 percent of this song happens in burr's head it's not like actually like a, a does that make sense but it, it, it doesn't matter whether that's right or not the point is we are getting more from burr and again the last time we got this much emotion was way for it but i feel like there's way more it just feels more impactful here and so yeah i i didn't catch a single musical motif in this song but there are so many references to previous songs many of which have to do with burr specifically duh but also burr's approach and his ambition and so i like the development that we get from him as a character and the song is just really good like leslie's singing there at the end is just incredible like it's it's so sultry and the way that he glides from note to note is like so it, it's i don't know it's otherworldly it's, it's basically the best way for me to word it i yeah the, the singing in this whole thing has been great but like for example in the last song i have already forgotten her name i'm sorry the, the the actress who plays peggy her singing is great in that song but it it didn't impact me emotionally in the same way it impacted me emotionally from like a lyrical standpoint where i'm like this is insane like <laughs> you know but I, I am more like in awe of her singing. Like her singing is great in that song. Same thing with like, say some of George Washington's singing moments. But in this song, something about Burr's singing was different. Like, I don't, I don't know how to explain it. I don't really have coherent words for it. Sorry, I, I filmed the outros right after the reaction. So I haven't had like time to like sit and gnaw on it and like process it. But like something about his singing was like ethereal, I guess. It's, it, it, it spiritual i don't know it, it was weird i, I, I had a, a different kind of appreciation it wasn't just like oh those notes are great or like that singing was powerful that belt really hit like it it was it was different I, I yeah i don't know if that makes sense that's not to take anything away from any of the other vocalists up until this point because like they've all been great and i've said that in like all of their videos they're all amazing i get it it's broadway everybody up there is like incredibly talented but the delivery in this song was different and maybe it's different for me because I, I relate to the song more and so I, I get that this could like just be a me thing I don't think it is based on how popular the actor is but like yeah long outro again I hey I tried I tried I, tried. I, I was like I'm not gonna make this video super long I, it, it, it is anyway though so um thank you so so much for being here with me in in this process this is the last crown emoji video we're doing another crown emoji video if that wasn't clear i appreciate all of you guys so much for staying so if you did please do drop a crown emoji in the comments so i can thank you personally uh and i also got like some some of my my more experienced viewers who were who were very thankful for me keeping with the same emojis because they could just like copy the comment over but uh next video we're, we're changing the emoji but for this one crown emoji so thank you so much for being here i really really do appreciate you guys so uh i want to thank you guys in the comment section down below if you have watched until this point and you aren't subscribed please do subscribe like i always say it's free it don't hurt you none but it does help out the channel greatly i will be reacting to a lot more musicals and other auxiliary hamilton content in the future so subscribe not to miss that because that my recommendations have just been it's been stuff you would want to see so uh definitely make sure to subscribe not to miss any of that stuff but anyway you guys have a great day and i'm seeing all of you guys on the channel next time peace Twilight.
Pink skies, no blues A new love, but we know that it accrues Like time in a QS shampoo New bamboo, much more of it will ensue I'm caught in this trance in loop Of sinking down in the stew You change up the brew, now life tastes so brand new it's delicious like fondue Under the moonlight tonight Stars and hearts shimmering Shimmering Ooh, Who I am, you're a bad light You are, I'm nice 